Last week, a story broke that the Florida Gators were under NCAA investigation. This came about a week after FSU got hit with NCAA penalties for a recruiting violation that happened almost two years ago. Is this something that UF should be worried about? What does it mean for Billy Napier? We're going to talk about all of that right now. So diving in. What I've been told is that this centers around the Jaden Rashada recruitment. Um, Obviously, it threw up some massive red flags at the time that it happened. Um, I don't know if you guys remember this, but there were several schools really in it for the Rashada commitment, Florida, Miami, USC, just to name, you know, a couple. All of these schools really wanted him. Um, Rashada just a very short time after signing with Florida, asked to be released from his letter of intent, citing essentially that he didn't get what was promised. Um, And there just was a lot of shadiness all the way around, right? Um, I think when this happened, there was many Gator fans that probably thought like, the NCAA is going to look into this. This just seems weird. And there was a lot of things with other schools too, right, that involved in his recruitment that could also be opened up for um, investigation, criticism, all the things. I don't think that it's a stretch to think that UF might be hit with some sort of inducement penalty. I would be pretty surprised if it was a level one, just based off of the trouble that FSU recently got in. I'm guessing it's going to be a level two infraction. Let's talk for a minute about FSU's penalties. Now, keep in mind, FSU was found to have had a coach drive a player to a meeting with a representative from the collective, Um, something that happens on most college campuses across the country and has been happening since NIL has become a thing. Their penalty is that offensive coordinator Alex Atkins is suspended for three games He also now has a show clause for two years. FSU cannot work directly with that collective for a year. Um, Now, that collective at the time was the collective for FSU sports kind of in general. Since um, that time period, though, that collective no longer focuses on football, and FSU has a new collective that just handles mainly football. So I don't know that that's really a huge uh, issue for them because this collective already wasn't working with football. Um, You know, you can think of it similarly to how Florida Victorious is different than the Gator Collective. The booster who got in trouble cannot be affiliated with the school for three years. So, you know, I don't know how much money that booster was bringing in, but there's not going to be, um, you know, a relationship there for three years. They also lose five scholarships. Now, in the past, losing five scholarships is a big deal. You get 85 scholarships, so now Florida State will have 80. I think that in this NIL time period, those five scholarships probably matter less right? Your top guys are getting a scholarship no matter what, but maybe your last five or so guys are going to be guys that like you could give a preferred walk on to, you could give them a scholarship spot, who knows? And with NIL, you can induce them to take a preferred walk on spot by the contract that they would be getting from NIL. The NIL essentially would cover what a scholarship covers. So that kid would still be totally okay being a member of your roster, but just as a preferred walk-on. So I think in the time that we're in right now, it matters less than it would have like 10 years ago where five scholarships would be a really big deal. Uh, They did lose some visits, um, official visits and days that they can go out and scout at high schools, have contact with players, things like that. None of it is super, uh, you know, major. And, uh, you know, some of it, if they miss 10 days of getting to go on high school campuses, it is my understanding that it, the visits count per coach. So if you have five coaches that go out on visits, it's really only two days that they can't, uh, go to those campuses. At least that's my understanding. None of the penalties that I just listed are a massive deal for FSU. And I don't think that any penalties that would potentially be enforced on Florida will be a huge deal 
either. Already covered why scholarships don't matter as much in the NIL era. era. I think that coaches can be really strategic about their visits. You also can roll over a certain number of visits from one season to the next um, official visits if you need to. So they've got that in you know in their back pocket. They can be strategic about scouting and in-person meetings. Um, and then the show clause really hurts the coach more than it hurts the school, right? And in reality, kind of keeps that coach there. That offensive coordinator at Florida State isn't going to be interviewing for jobs for the next two years because he comes with that scarlet letter of show cause for two years. So, uh, you know, I don't think anything that's levied at Florida will be any worse than what was levied at Florida State. And I don't really think any of it's going to be that huge of a deal. And we are talking about things that are happening every day in college football. But that's not to say that this doesn't matter because it does. First of all, it's a black eye for the university. Nobody wants to get put on probation. Florida as the school hasn't been on probation for football since the the 80s. So, uh, you know, new territory, something that UF always strives to do is follow the rules. And this is a black eye for that. And honestly, it's another stain on Scott Strickland's tenure. He has had um, multiple, multiple problems with women's basketball, with soccer. Uh, Now this, there's, you know, it's, it doesn't look great for him. If I was going to say who it has the most black eye on, it would probably be Scott Strickland, right? He just can't seem to do things the right way. And, I, you know, I've also seen some funny jokes. We can't even win when we cheat, you know, ha ha ha. We'll hear those for a while. But I, this is not great, but I don't think it's the end of the world by any means. And obviously UF didn't want this out. Now Baker requested, got denied from UF. Um, he got inter- attorneys involved. And because of the Florida sh- sunshine laws, the information had to be released. So that's, you know, why it is out there, which, you know, as the general public, I think everybody deserves to have all information brought into the light. So, uh, you know, it is what it is at this point. So what does it mean for Billy Napier? Um, I don't think it changes much about his tenure. I don't think it changes his expectations, our expectations of him. I think if he wins, he's fine. That's what he's going to be judged on. I honestly don't think that he is going to be judged harshly for being the head coach of a program doing things that every other college program is currently doing in an, in this NIL era that we're in. But so what is the most ridiculous part of all of this? Honestly, it's that the NCAA is trying to wield any power that they possibly can in this moment. They are doing everything they can to try and control the sport without actually putting down rules and regulations that could really widespread help us govern the sport. Everybody is doing these things. Players admitted in interviews. Did you see recently an interview with a former Alabama player talking about Iowa talking to a midseason? The kid is now on the roster at Iowa. Tampering is happening everywhere. Pay for play, honestly, is happening everywhere. Conversations prior to kids getting to college are happening almost everywhere. And so it's interesting who the NCAA picks and chooses to go after. But when there's a smoking gun or an ax to grind, it gives the NCAA the opportunity to punish schools. And that's what they want to do. That's what we're seeing. We're looking at (laughs) some of these things are such a joke. You're talking about a coach driving a recruit to a meeting with a collective. All of those things happen. That's what happened with Florida State. For our situation, you're talking about, essentially, it was a player trying to extort money from a collective, but Florida may be the ones, you know, in trouble at this point. There is so much going on in college football. And if the NCAA wanted to help, they'd stop going after low-hanging fruit like this, and they'd change the rules to make it easier for everybody. But that's not what they're choosing to do. Now, this particular investigation has been going on since last summer. From what I understand, that's kind of a similar timeline for uh, Florida State. So we have no idea when we will get a resolution on this. We just know that FSU has gotten their their resolution. So hopefully Florida is not too far behind. Most of the time, schools are working with the NCAA to kind of negotiate a resolution. 
Um, it usually works out more favorably for the school if they do that, as opposed to, you know, not participating in the conversations, not helping the NCAA along. I assume UF is doing this. The alternative would be to fight, to appeal, sue over it. I don't know that that's the route that UF will go, but I guess we'll see. Side note, unrelated to this, UF got both the guys we spoke about last week in our video on Friday. Big pickups for the Gators, both DeAndre Robinson and Jameer Grimsley. Got to keep that positive momentum going into the 2025 class. And guys, we've talked about this so many times on the channel. In the NIL era, it is so important to keep those relationships because sometimes being second is going to pay off in the end. And that's exactly what happened in both of these recruitments. I appreciate you guys checking in and watching today's video. I'll do my best to keep you updated with this story. And hopefully we're going to have a resolution on it soon. Go Gators!